hear a telephone conversation in which Francis Drew asks Mr Harding about an arts club. First, you have some time to look at questions one to four. Hello. Hello. Is that Appleton 363? It is Harding speaking. Oh, um, are you, I mean, I'd like to speak to the secretary of the arts club. Yes, speaking. Oh, hello. My name is Francis Drew. I just moved to the area. My classmate and I, and we'd be interested in joining the arts club, but we'd like some more information, really. You know, about joining and the sorts of activities you do. Yes, well, what do you want's our calendar. Ask at the library. I'll make sure that there are plenty there by Thursday. That's all right for you? Yes, fine, thank you. But um, would you mind telling me how much it costs to join? Membership fee for an adult is £2.50 per year, of course. What exactly does club membership entitle one to? Entitle you to? Oh, uh, for a start, there's the uh, club events. You get invited to them, of course. They're for members and only... Um, they are free. What sorts of events are there? I mean... You'll see what they are when you get hold of a calendar. But, well, there's club evening, for instance, once a month, usually Wednesdays from 8 till 10. And whereabouts do you hold them? Club evenings, uh, the, the Beach Pavilion. Do you know it? No, I don't think I do. It's not near the seafront, is it? No, up past the tennis courts on Park Avenue. You know where that is. No, I'm afraid I don't. We'd soon find it, though. Quite good. I don't know what your interests are. Music? Got any musical talents? I'm not sure about talents exactly. I like music. We both do. Do either of you sing? Oh, yes. We've both been in choirs. Well, there you are, then. The club's got a very fine choir. Very fine. I'm in it myself, as a matter of fact. We have practices every Friday evening. And it's no good just thinking of joining if you can't make the practices. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 5 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 5 to 10. What's the procedure? I mean, if we decide to join the choir or any of the other activities, how do we go about it? You can't get into the choir without an audition. As far as the other sections are concerned, members have to apply through the section secretary in the first place. Yes, right. And the fee again. I've written it down somewhere. £2.50 each. And where do we send it? To you? No, I'm the secretary. It's the treasurer who deals with that. I'll give you his name if you want to write it down. Yes, please. His name is Hosegood. H-O-S-E and then Good. Yes. Initial P, address 3 Clay Hill, Appleton. Right, and it's all right to send a cheque? That's the usual, yes. Payable to Appleton Arts Club. Appleton A... Double P-L-E-T-O-N. Oh, and uh, better put your address on the back as you're new. Uh, and incidentally, there's a newsletter out three times a year just to keep club members up to date with what's going on. They, they're they sent to everyone. That's good. Um, Just one last thing. Would you mind telling me what the other sections are so that I can tell my classmate and we... The players? That's our act group, I've told you. Choir, you know about. There's the gramophone circle, the music workshop, the literary and discussion group. Oh, that one meets in different members' homes. Then there's the studio workshop. And um, what have I missed out? Oh, yes, the art talks. That's the lot, I think. Ah, the film society. That's the other one. Got them all. Ah, oh, yes, just about. Thank you very much. You've been very helpful. Not at all. Pleased to assist. And uh, look forward to meeting you and your classmate at the club. Yes, thank you. Goodbye then. That is the end of part one.
You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a conversation between a travel agent and a customer. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Good morning. Can I help you? Yes, I'd like to get some information about trips to New Zealand. Uh, certainly. Take a seat and I'll be right with you. Thanks. Now, where would you like to go in New Zealand? Well, I was hoping to do a bit of travelling around, actually. There are a few things I'd like to see and do before I go back home. Right. One thing I really want to do is go to Christchurch. I have relatives living there that I can stay with, my mother's cousin, and I've heard it's a nice place. Yes, it's a lovely city, and staying with relatives will help with the budget, of course. The budget? It will save you some money. Oh, right. Well, I'm not too worried about that. I've saved quite a bit of money working in Australia. Oh, that's nice. Good for you. Uh, well, you know that New Zealand consists of two main islands, the North Island and the South Island, and Christchurch is on the South Island. Is it? I was never very good at geography at school. <laughs> Do you have a map I could look at? Uh, sure. Uh, here we are. Right, I see. And, well, then I'd also like to spend some time in Auckland and maybe I could do an English language course there. Can you organise that sort of thing for me? Oh, certainly. We'd be happy to arrange that. Uh, but bear in mind that Auckland is in the North Island. OK. And I'd also like to do some skiing or maybe even some snowboarding. I hear New Zealand is a great place for that. Yes, absolutely. But... Uh, you should go to Auckland first for your studies and then you can get the ferry across to the South Island and take the bus down to the snow. Oh, I don't like boats very much. <laughs> I'm not much of a sailor. I think I prefer to fly. <laughs> right. Um, what about joining a walking tour? That could be really fun. Not sure about walking, but... Joining a tour might be a good way to travel because then I might make some friends my own age. Now, let's get some details. Uh, can I have your name, please? Yes, it's Su Ming Li, but you can call me Sue. <laughs> OK, Sue. And what's your address here in Melbourne? I'm living with my aunt in the suburb of Kew. It's 29 Lock Street. That's L-O-C-H, not L-O-C-K. Do you have a phone number that I can get you on? The best thing would be if I give you my mobile. I always have it on me. It's 0402 558 992. OK. And uh, when do you want to travel? Because you'll need to be down south in July or August. Oh, yes, of course. That's winter, isn't it? So I'd better go to Auckland in May. Yes, let's say um, departing from Melbourne on the 1st of May. That's a Saturday. Mm. And then you could begin your course on Monday the 3rd. That sounds great. And how long would you like to study for? Um, a month, two, three? What do you think? Well, I'll probably need more than a month. Uh, 
What about eight weeks until the end of June? Fine. I'll see what I can do. Oh, and、uh, how would you like to pay for this? On my visa card, if that's possible. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions eighteen to twenty. Now listen and answer questions eighteen to twenty. Hello, Sue. It's Angelo from Cosmos Travel here. I've booked your flight, and I've found you an English college called the Harbour Language Centre. Great. Where exactly is that?、Uh, well, have you got that little map I gave you yesterday? Ah,、uh, yes. You see where the harbour is with the three wharves and the water? Yes, got that. Okay. There are two parallel streets, Key Street. That's Q U A Y and Custom Street. The building where the college is located is on Key Street, opposite Prince's Wharf. Right, got it. And what about accommodation? Well, I've booked you into a hotel for the first three nights, and then the accommodation officer will find you a family to live with. Good. And where's the hotel? It's a short walk from the college, on the corner of Queen Street and City Road. Which corner exactly? On the left-hand side, as we're looking at the map. Okay, near the little park. Yes, that's right. And what about a good bookshop? I'm going to need to buy a dictionary and some English books. Yes, well, I believe there's a really good language bookshop on the corner of Customs Street and Queen Street. It's near the college, so that's pretty convenient. Thank you so much. You've been really helpful. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a discussion among three students who are organising an international film festival at their college. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Now listen carefully to the first part of the discussion, and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-four. Thanks for coming to this meeting on such short notice, Anna and Veronica. It looks like we have just become the organising committee for this year's international film festival. We've all just met, so perhaps we should start by an introduction with a bit of background from each of us. Okay, I'm Anna. I finished three years of a languages degree in Sweden, where I come from. This year, I decided to study overseas to get to know a different part of the world. I'm also a big fan of European cinema, especially French and Italian. Those are the languages I majored in, along with English. To me, film is a great way to learn about the rest of the world. I was in the film club at my university, so when I saw the notice asking for volunteers, I thought it would be a good way to meet people and get involved in something I really enjoy. Thanks, Anna. My name is Veronica, and I come from Italy. I'm doing graduate studies in English literature. I went to some of the films in the festival last year and enjoyed them. I especially like the video interviews. 
That was when I decided to get involved. I used to do film reviews for our student newspaper back home. Hi, I'm Chris from Scotland and I'm in fourth year journalism. Cinema is my hobby. Last year I joined the organising committee just like you have now and somehow this year I've ended up in charge. I'm actually able to use my coordinating work on the festival towards a credit for one of my courses. I have to write up a report on the festival with recommendations, so that's an extra motivation for me. So I hope this is going to be a good experience for us all. OK, where would you like to start? How about a general overview of the festival? I don't really know much about it. Well, the film festival was started by International Student Society five years ago and has grown every year. It is held over four nights during study break, Wednesday to Saturday. Normally we show three films a night. Last year we tried to choose films from different parts of the world that fit together in some way, maybe a similar theme. Or we could feature a type of film like action films or science fiction. Now you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30. Now listen to the rest of the discussion and answer questions 25 to 30. Who picks the films? It's up to us on the committee to decide. You mean we get to pick all the films ourselves? What a hard decision. There are so many to choose from. Well, that's the fun part. We have this catalogue of independent distributors. The films are listed by language and have a short summary. We just have to go through it to find a good combination of films that will attract an audience. Veronica mentioned something about interviews. How does that fit in? We set up cameras in the foyer of the theatre and did live interviews before, during intermission and after the screening. Anyone from the audience could come up and talk about the film. The Broadcasting and Journalism School set it up and ran the interviews. They were shown on big screens around the lobby and in the theatre. It went over really well. We had a long lineup of students waiting to be interviewed on TV. Everybody wanted their minute of fame. Great idea. Yeah, it worked really well. We should certainly do something similar again. Maybe even develop the idea further, like a website with audience reviews and discussion, so we can get as much participation and involvement as possible. Hey, that's a good idea. Can I ask a question? None of the films are in English, right? Are they dubbed or subtitled? Well, we do occasionally choose a film in English, but only from unusual places where the dialect is so strong they sometimes need subtitles, like the Caribbean or even Scotland. The majority of films in the festival are foreign language, dubbed in English. We've learned from experience that students don't like reading subtitles. Maybe they read too much already. Whatever the reason, the subtitled films get smaller audiences, so we avoid them as much as possible. So how large an audience can we expect, and how much does it cost to get in? It costs $5 per film, or a $20 pass for the whole event. All 12 films for the real movie fan. We would have broken even last year, except for a bad storm on the Friday night. We almost had to cancel the whole thing. But overall, we had a good turnout. More than 2,000 people in four days. Oh, that's what I was wondering about. The financial part. Where does the funding come from? What kind of budget do we have? The festival is subsidised by the Student Council. We generate money through advertising and through admission charges. We'll go over the budget in details a little later, but we've got lots of work to do in the meantime. I guess we have to start pretty soon. Well, I think by the 1st of March at the latest. We need to select all the films. Then we have to find some advertisers to sponsor the event. That shouldn't be too hard. We'll just start with last year's list. Our deadline for that should be the middle of March. By the end of March, we need to design the programme 
Then we can get posters made up and distributed in April. Like you said, we need some clever promotion, something to generate interest and get people talking. We have four months to get ready. It should be enough time. Okay, where do we start? Let's start by talking about films, since that is the best part, and see what we come up with. What was the best film you saw last year? That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. Listen to the continuation of the lecture about the human brain. Look at the diagram before you listen. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Okay, we have looked at the top view of the brain and seen how it is divided into lobes. Now we are going to look at a more complex diagram of the center of the brain. I will briefly go through some of the important parts that make up the brain, and then talk more about what each does. First of all, you can see that by far the largest part of the brain is the cerebrum, and it is made up of the three lobes we have already talked about. The lobe below, coloured yellow on the diagram here, is the cerebellum. Right in the centre of the brain here is the thalamus. The hypothalamus is part of it, but it has a slightly different function. Now here, running down from the center of the brain, is the brain stem. It is made up of the midbrain, the pons, and the medulla oblongata, and is connected to the spinal cord, which you can see here at the bottom of the diagram. Now, finally, this little gland just to the left of the midbrain—it looks like a little tail—is the pituitary gland. Okay, let's go back and say something about the function of the various parts of the brain. The cerebrum, the largest part, as we have said, has two halves or hemispheres. I will talk more about the difference between the two hemispheres later. The cerebrum is the part of the brain that is really our intelligence. It controls voluntary movement. That is movement that we are in control of, speaking, for example. But it is also responsible for our emotional thinking and memory. The cerebellum is responsible for fine movement and coordination. It helps us with balance, for example, and to understand where we are in relation to space around us. The thalamus. Here in the center, processes what we feel with our body, touch and temperature, for example, and controls how we react to those senses. The hypothalamus has a similar function, but regulates bodily needs, such as hunger and thirst, and tells us when we need sleep. Now, at the top of the brainstem is the midbrain. This is a sort of switchboard, 
a very complex switchboard. It sends messages which help the brain communicate with other parts of the nervous system. The pons in the middle of the brain stem here sends messages from the cerebrum to the cerebellum and spinal cord. The medulla oblongata is here just above the spinal cord. It regulates essential bodily functions, like breathing and the rate of our heartbeat. The spinal cord is part of the central nervous system and runs down inside the spinal column. It connects the brain to nerves that go to the rest of the body. Now, the pituitary gland, this little gland, has a hugely important function. It releases hormones to the body that regulate all sorts of things. How quickly we grow, and the size we grow to, the rate at which we age. It also regulates whether we have a slow or fast metabolism and how we relate to stress. Now I am going to show you a model of the human brain and I want you to identify... That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. That is the end of the test. You now have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to your IELTS listening answer sheet.